you know, probably the most accepted denomination of esport there. But guys, our first player here coming out for Samsung Galaxy Con is going to be Shine. Zerg player, very, very cheesy. Has done well for himself so far here in Pro League. Yeah. Five and two. Uh, a lot of those games going to uh, against Sulky. Sulky yeah. not having the best record against this guy famously. No, he has not. And his opponent, Hero. Runner-up for IEM Global Finals, World Championship, I should say. 55 and 51, all-time this season. He's 11 and 6. He's 1 and 1 versus Zerg, but that gold border around his name definitely indicating that this guy is one of the best Protosses. And as you can tell, he's pretty much on the rise with that uh, pointy arrow. He's got a straight-up arrow there, nice nice and big and red. Yeah, he's not, uh, he's not angled at all. He's totally no. vertical, man. Straight up. Straight up, as straight up as it gets, dude. All right, so our first map will be Outbox. So let's jump into game number one. SK Telecom. Down here in the bottom right on Outboxer for her first game in the pink. It is Shine. And to the top left in yellow for CJ Entis. It's Hero. Now, I will feel the need to tell you guys that my screen has gone black. <laughs> and I don't know what's happening, but... I will have it fixed in between game one and game two, my observing PC. I'm not sure what's going on with it. I'm not going to leave the game or, do, or touch it or do anything because I don't want these players to lag. I don't know what's going to happen. That, that would be not, embarrassing. I'm not going to touch it. The first day we get an observing PC, like we lag out the game. But uh, we're going to avoid that as, as much as possible. Right. But we do have this one monitor over here, but no observing PC. It'll be fine. Um, you know, if need be, we can bring in the emergency monitor. Oh, God. So you can see the most recent matches. Four wins and one loss. My uh, hero is on the big upswing. Yeah. It's a pretty pretty nice previous five matches. So, guys, we're in round three now. And this is the time for these teams to... to it's, it's their last growing point, essentially. Yeah, just a little break looking at the GG girls over here. Uh, nice little emoticons over there. Uh, but I really feel like, you know, these teams... In, in round four, there's like not enough. There's not any room to grow. There's not a whole lot you can do to push your team uh, into the the final playoffs. If you haven't gotten enough points by round three, things are going to be pretty final in round four. So if Samsung has a tough performance here, or, or same with CJ, it's going to be hard for them to actually make it based on what's happened before. Oh yeah, definitely. I mean, this is this is basically the final round where teams can either make it or break it for their team. Look at this over here. Shine was trying to hide a drone in the corner of Hero's base, but it did get spotted by Hero. Very nice scouting by Hero. Oh, he's actually going to hatch block. Now, Shine's the type of player who will six pull your mother, so this doesn't really come as much of a surprise. Uh, he He's going to block the Nexus for a significant period of time. It's not going to be any pro pull, I don't think because of the two cannons and the way he opened here. If it were a gateway opening, it'd be a different story. He will continue to block over here and most likely will even add a pylon to make sure that Zerg can't get a nexus or a, a hatchery. If yep. he got a nexus, that would be so unfair. We're getting a look at his nice micro over here. Just while he's handling stuff at his base, he's making a ton of waypoints over here, keeping his probe alive for as long as possible. But eventually he's going to be driven out by those four Zerglings yeah. and Shine is going to be able to throw down a hatch once he hits 300 minerals. Since it wasn't a hatch first block, I guess he's just gonna go ahead and leave the pylon out. You know, cut that out of his build, because this hatcher will also have to be canceled, and then he can go ahead and drop his nexus right away. Drone goes... No! Oh my god. Wow. Well practiced right there. He could actually try to eBay block, I mean, uh, Evo block, but it's not really gonna be a good idea, considering there are two cannons there. Zerling's yeah. not getting in here either for the same reason. And interestingly enough, back at Shine's base, he adds another hatchery with this. He knows that Heroes has spent a lot of minerals over there. He did the forge first as well. There's not going to be any gateways, gateway pressure coming for a long time here. He has those four Zerglings at the front as well. He delayed the Nexus for a very long time, so he feels safe enough to throw down that second hatch. Yeah. Well, uh, those girls look a little bit shy, but there's no reason to be shy about what you love. Now, 
Let's see what the plan here is now, because both of these players are a bit off in their builds, right? The the hatchery messes up with how a normal Zerg versus Protoss build would, would kind of fill out, and the same of Hero. His next is a little bit late, so the timings are all going to be a little bit off. I still think we're going to see a Stargate here, but he does have that Forge to work with, so we could see some, some plus one action coming into that. Sentry goes down first. He's going to drop that 100 gas. We'll see how long he waits for the Stargate. Goes right after the Stalker, actually, after canceling that Sentry. Yeah, wants to get that, uh, that Stargate out as soon as possible. Sides first. Maybe thought that something was coming out of Shine because he didn't have much scouting information, so he would need that Sentry for that force field. But after feeling safe enough, maybe he saw the third base with that probe. Yeah, he does see it now, and he's going to be safe enough, or feel safe enough to throw it on that Stargate. Yeah, and... Uh We'll see what happens with, you know, with how much damage he can done with his Phoenix is. Stalker going to come out here, rescue that probe. No Mothership Core, of course. And he actually goes into robotics. So very quick robo here. Yeah, very, very tech heavy on hero side, whereas a shine going straight away for that ep economic replay. No. My screen update, by the way, nothing. Happened. Nothing has changed. The mouse is there. The mouse. You is got back. the cursor, but it's alone on that black screen. Very lonely. And that's a green one too. It's the it's the Terran version. Got the yep. cursor. Just so you guys know. That's all the updates I can get from my observing PC. So, Zerglas here will be warded off, and he scouts the four gases. So he knows it's not going to be like a super greedy third nexus coming up here anytime soon. Yeah. But with this first Phoenix, he is going to be able to drive out those Overlords. He does get that one kill. I, I believe he would want to send one Phoenix over there to the top right of his base, kill that other Overlord. Would be pretty much free. Yep. Yeah, and that's exactly send what he does. Yep. Continuing well. to ward out the Zerglings with this one Stalker. Very nicely done by Hero so far. Warp Prism is on the way, too. And, you know, with the, without that Sentry from earlier, Sentry Drop not going to be too good here. He's killing all the Overlords with this. The Phoenixes are going to deny all sorts of vision. By the way, this is one of our changes to the map pool as well. There's no creep tumors on the islands anymore. So you can take it a lot easier as a non-Zerg player. Yep. And Shine, losing a lot of his Overlords, you know, it's going to be a bit of a pain to remake all of those. Even going to lose this Overseer. Might want to cancel that. Yeah. If it finishes, it gets all its health back, but it's not going to go anywhere. Yeah, it's just going to die, fortunately, for him. That actually supply blocks him, which yeah. means he can't make any Hydras right now. He had to spend 400 minerals back in those Overlords. And, you know, he made 13 drones right oh! before this. He's going to take the island base, but he forgot a probe. That's what's actually happening here. We see on day one, game one, a map change that seems, you know, somewhat insignificant coming into play right away. He is going to take the island map, and he's going to go air toss here. Now, two Phoenix uh, drones killed here. Three, I should say. And uh, there's Zerg drones, not Phoenix drones. That was weirdly worded. But he's going to try to kill the Queen here as well, and he will be successful. By Phoenix, killed drones, maybe. Yeah. That's uh, some Korean grammar getting into your head, actually, if you think about it. Yeah, it is actually a little <laughs> bit like, what is happening to me? Well, here's that Nexus you were talking about. He's going to drop that down. I love this, actually. Right away, going with the map changes, is going to take advantage of that. And, you know, Shine, he did see the heavy air play coming out, so he does have that Hydra den down. He is getting that Hydra range upgrade as well. So he's going to be happy with this. So if my Observer PC hadn't crashed, I'd be able to check exactly how many Void Rays he made, but I'm pretty sure he made one. Yeah, I think it was just one. And he's going into Colossi with this. Now what's weird to Shine is probably at this point, like, why don't you have a third base? And if you, you know, if you get a third base, right now he's going to think, okay, that's a bit of a late third, but that's fine. But it's actually going to be four bases that he's up against. But he might be thinking, like, oh, he's going to do a Colossus all in here. He only has two bases. He's still not taking a third. And that that lack of information about the island base is pretty hurtful. You know, small map changes like this, you know, you, you got to wonder if the pro gamers are very, you know, well prepared for this. Are they thinking about this when they go into their first game? Or are they re rather thinking about how nervous they are, just wanting to play as well as they possibly can and maybe forget something like this? Definitely something that could happen. But look at this. Already coming in here with four. Zell, it's going to try to snipe out that queen. It looks like he might be able to get it. going to go for the spore crawler, actually, which means that later on his harassment in this location will be a little bit more effective. Maybe he could use some DTs. Kills that spine. Queen, don't know if he actually good micro on the queen. I think he will save it with the hydras. <laughs> yeah, nicely done. Yeah, got to go on a little lap around the base, but is going to save that queen. Good, good. exercise. Yeah.
<laughs> got to keep your legs in shape. You're getting oh, older. he recalled probes. Oh, wow. That's, that's how you that do it. Cool. That is pretty sexy. I'm liking it so much already. All right, well, they need to mine, though. <laughs> it was really cool, but now it's just... Okay, he sends it on. He like, looks at his idle worker type. He's like, I have. How many idle workers are right? Those 20 idle workers over there. They just need to get to work. Nidus Network. Oh, is he going to try to take the island, too? I doubt it, because he's shine, and, like, expanding is not normally his plan. Uh... In fact, I think this might be the first time I've ever seen Shine like take a fourth base in good conscience. Yeah, I was gonna say. I mean, he's going into fourth base. Is he actually gonna get a fifth base with the Nidus? I I'm not sure. But for okay, now, he sees it. Yeah, he's gonna see it now, and he's gonna be like, "Oh, how long have you had that up?" He's got to check the minerals. Got to check the gas. It hasn't been too long, so you know, shouldn't be too worried. But he does have to deal with that one way or another. And that's what the Nidus is for. But with, I mean. Like, lol. <laughs> He's actually gonna try this? Uh, sorry to tell you, buddy, but that's Envision. Was he just, like, hoping that he wasn't gonna see it? Even warping in that Zealot was, like, actually a bit... That was a bit, like, was, like unnecessary. A, a little bit too much. Yeah, like, what is that Zealot gonna do now? He, like, stuck on the island. Probably gonna actually eventually later on kill that Zealot with his own cannons if we go late game. Only nine Mutilus on well, the map. You know... There's not too many Phoenixes out here, and those Voiders are very slow, so if there aren't enough cannons there at the base, and he does get a significant amount of Mutilus out here, could do some damage. I'm a little bit surprised he's not actually prepared a little bit more for a Mutilus switch. Two Phoenixes is not going to cut it. He has some cannons. This attack here by Shine is, is destined to fail, right? I mean, he's attacking to a natural that has cannon support, multiple cannons, mind you, from the hatch early on in the game. Okay, so cannons are at the third base, but they're not here in the main. So he is a little bit exposed. He needs to get that Colossi here. He needs to pull his probes. Okay, he does pull the probes. How many probes are they going to get? A little bit of lag there, but these Voidery is now going to come back. They are going to get one of these Mutas. Could get a second one. A nice overcharge here is going to get that second one. Taking off a couple of drones before, or probes rather, before getting out of here is Shine. Keeps up there with, looks like, seven Mutas left. No upgrades whatsoever for the ground army of Shine. And he is expanding all over the map. And, you know, the third base for Hero looks cool, but it's actually not, you know, it's not getting any more minerals than a normal third would have. And I think he could have held a normal third. So until he takes that normal third base as his fourth, I don't really feel like, you know, we have to look too much into this island because also the saturation was a bit delayed. He had to recall to get probes over there. Not a very natural progression of, of bases. Now, this base will be sniped by this warp prism, the zealot harassment there. And he just made, like, way more drones than Shine, like, ever makes. Yep. He's at 84. I think this is the highest number of drones I've ever seen for Shine. He does lose his hatchery, but, you know, one thing I love that Shine is doing, it isn't his normal play, but he actually, he saw the army that Hero's building. It's filled with Voidries and Colossi. He's like, that is really immobile. I have a bunch of Mutas. I'm just going to take a bunch of expansions, and it's going to be very hard for you to shut me down because I'm going to be very mobile. I'm going to be all over the map. And, you know, as you attack me, I'm going to counterattack. I'm going to have a bunch of other bases going, and I'm going to be fine. Yeah. Well, I mean, he's going to come in here and do a big attack. Now, these Hydras are forfeit, especially with those force fields. Goodbye, Hydras. And this is going to actually force him to turn around. Three Phoenix is being made at a time. The other Phoenix is turning around. This is not looking good for Shine because he's likely to lose all of his Mutalists here, except Hero's Micro was terrible and still is here for a second. Needs to stay, keep those away from the Mutalists, not on top of them. Now he starts to do it right. Oh, still though, that, that's, uh, needs to be talking you know, to Zest, man, and learn some of, his, some of his tricks. You know, I, I I actually like that he just fought straight up. It forces Shine to just fight. It, it like, forces the fight 100%. You know, even though he's losing a bunch of uh, Phoenixes, he doesn't really care because he still has this really, really strong ground army. He's like, oh, okay, I can make, like, Infinity Phoenixes as well, and that's your whole army, all those mutas, so. You just lost a ton of gas while I still have this huge army. Oh, no Zealot block here. That hurts. The wings are going to come to the main base, but again with three cannons here. He's going to eliminate a lot of those right away. And he's going to warp in these Zealots, which already have double upgrades on a forge. So he's really being very sloppy with these Phoenixes, though. I, I have to be honest. He, he's lost the pylon again, which is hurtful. That's not really the end of the world for him, but it delays his Phoenix composition a little bit more. This is something that Shine is trying to capitalize on. He makes now more and more Mutas, 11 more. And there's still no fourth base, whereas Shine has been on four bases and all the harassment that's washed up on his beach uh, has is just not... It's not been enough. Now, it needs to make sure he doesn't throw away more Hydras. 
This has just been like a Hydra buffet so far this game. I mean, Hero's just been right up in those Hydras the whole time with all of his Colossi, and even the Voiders attacking has been really nice. Now, Hero's going to come over here to this fourth base, and it's going to go down 100%. Or I guess you could call this fifth base now that that uh, regular third base location is getting up for Shine. But look at this. Shine going for a big counterattack here. Is going to kill that pylon. This is going to force Hero to turn around. Even though he did get that hatchery, how much damage is Shine going to do back here? Yeah, well, it looks like he's going to do a lot. There's not that many Phoenixes here. He's going to unpower the Stargates again. Well, maybe not. A lot of Zerglings on the ground. The thing is, can he beat the, the Protoss army straight up on the ground? I don't think so. And if Hero starts to micro his Phoenix as well, which it looks like he is finally doing, then uh, that's, that's all that he's got going for him. Once he loses these Lynx and these Mutas, he can just walk across the map and end it. I mean, yep. look at this. Look at that unit's lost tab. That's gross. That's twice the, the unit's lost for Shine. Yep, that's disgusting. Shine Shine just lost, like, a ton of army supply. He's trying to expand again, but if I were here, I would just go for the attack right now. He's got too big of an army. There's nothing that Shine can do to hold this off. Yeah, I mean, look at the army supply, 117 to 61. Yep. Not happening, man. <laughs> He's got Lingmita against, you know, even, I, I could even say the Voiders and the Phoenixes could kill that army. Yeah. Take this base, oh, bro. <laughs> what are you doing? You didn't cancel that? Yeah. And this time he does have that uh, Zealot, and he has those uh, cannons to back him up. Now the pylon is back up, so should be okay to defend this. He's going to micro against these Mutas that aren't defending the huge uh, force of Colossi and Voiders at his main base, and he's going to be in a bit of trouble here, Shine. Yeah, I would say so. Phoenix Micro for Hero is starting to get pretty, starting to get pretty standard. He's actually, you know, just killing the Mutas. Look at this. This yep. is much better. Just had to get warmed up, you know. Yeah. Had a bit of a break from uh, Pro League. Exactly. <laughs> well, Zerglings are crashing into that Zealot with cannons and stock to support. This is going to be the end of the oh, Mutas, boy. and therefore the end of Shine in Game One. CJ is going to take it. GG. That's going to be it. Hero does take the first game for CJ. Uh, this was a bit expected, but Shine putting up a nice fight. Uh, played a game that we weren't really used to seeing him play. We, he played decently late there, was expanding a ton, went up to even nearly 90 drones. So interesting play out of Shine, trying to mix up his play there. Uh, all right, I fixed it. Yeah, you're still like working on that PC over there. <laughs> Everything is, is good for now. Well, we'll see when we try to go into that second game what happens. Everybody over here for CJ, very, very happy winning that game. Shine's got to be a bit down, uh, you know. Yeah. Got to be feeling a little bit, uh, 